Okay, so yesterday we spent time looking at the 306090 and the 454590 triangles and their ratios. Today, what we're going to look at is how this applies to every other angle and ratio. This is on page 68. Um, our goal when it comes to what are we going to accomplish here is we're going to be able to study, we're going to study what we call the unit circle. And the unit circle just talks about the ratios of certain angles around the entire circle on a Cartesian plane, in which the radius of that circle is going to be 1, hence we call it the unit circle. Um, what we're going to look at today is uh, how sine and cos apply to this. Okay, so I'm going to draw myself a Cartesian plane, and I'm going to take an angle theta in the first quadrant. Okay, now I'm going to label this point x, y. So it represents any, any x, y point anywhere on this Cartesian plane. And if I draw this angle in for it, I can then establish what my, my angle ratios are going to be. All right, so what that means is this. If I make this x and this y, this r right here is my radius. Now, I say we're going to study it when it's, that radius is 1. But for right now, it helps us to understand this, the ratios a little bit better if I label it as r. <coughs> Excuse me. So, how do I get r then? Well, square root of x squared plus y squared equals r. Just your simple Pythagoras' theorem. More importantly though, I want to look at the ratios. How do I calculate what the sine ratio is? What is the sine theta here? y over r. Opposite over hypotenuse. What is the cos of theta equal to? X over R. <coughs> Very good. And the tan of theta, then, its ratio is? What is it? Y over X. Right? Opposite over adjacent. <coughs> That's pretty straightforward. Okay? But if I make this guy a 1 here, let's say I make the radius a 1. And I look at these ratios one more time. So if that's the case, what is the sine of theta now? It's y over 1, right? And the cos of theta is x. So what does that tell us about our circle or our, or our, uh, our coordinates? These coordinates can be found at any time by taking the ratio of the cos of theta or the ratio of sine theta in which cos theta is x and sine theta is y. Now how does that become important to us? Well, the first thing that we want to identify is where is sine positive and where is cos positive in terms of our quadrants. Okay, so in quadrant one, if cos is x and sine is x, they're both positive, we all agree? What about in quadrant two? X is negative, therefore my cos ratio is negative in this quadrant. It's going to be negative cos theta, sine theta. In quadrant 3, they're both negative, right? Negative x, negative y, so it's going to be a minus cos theta, minus sine theta. So what that means is that my ratio, whatever it is, is 
the cos is going to be negative, or the x value is going to be negative, and the y value is going to be negative, and then quadrant four. Cos is positive, right? But sine's negative in this quadrant. Well, they've come up with a very simple way of remembering this. The simple way of remembering this is this. Cast. Cos is positive down here. Sine and tan are both negative. I'll explain that in a second. All of them, sine, cos, and tan, are all positive in this quadrant. In this quadrant, only sine is positive. And in this quadrant, tan is positive. Well, why is tan positive? Well, we know that, time, that tan is y over x here, right? Which means then that the tan of theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. So in this quadrant, if sine is positive and cos is negative, what does that mean for tan? It's a negative. If both of them are negatives, a negative divided by a negative makes tan positive. Tan is also positive up here because you've got a positive divided by a positive. Right? So this is the way to do it. Cast is the way to remember that. So when you're finding the ratios in any quadrant, that's how we determine it. Okay, so where is this of uh, purpose or use to us? Okay? Look at the example one on page 69. The point P, 12 and negative 9, lies on the terminal arm of the angle theta in standard position. Determine the exact trade ratio of sine, cos, and tan. So, this is probably the most important thing I can show you going ahead into grade 11 or 12 pre-calculus in terms of trig functions. The first thing is draw the triangle. It's the easiest way to solve these questions. They're all set up to be pretty easy, but if you draw the triangle, you'll number one, get the right quadrant. <coughs> Excuse me. Number one, you'll get the right quadrant all the time, therefore the right um, <coughs> signs on the functions. <coughs> all right, so first one I'm going to draw Coordinate 12, negative 9, somewhere down here. Draw my triangle. Now my objective, okay, so I'm going to label it. This is 12, this is negative 9. So the first thing I'm going to do is find out what my radius is. So 144 and 81 make 225. Square root of 225, 15. Okay, so you want to write this in your workbook, right? You've got the, the space for it. Write it in the workbook. So draw your picture on the, on the diagram. From the coordinates of point P, you know that x is equal to 12 and y is equal to negative 9. Square root of r is equal to... 12 squared plus negative 9 squared, which we end up getting r is uh, 15. So now we write out our ratio. Again, the angle is always made with the x-axis, no matter which quadrant you're in. So the sine of theta then is equal to what? What's the sine ratio on this one? Negative 9 over 15. What's the cos of theta? Twelve over fifteen, and what is the tan of theta? Minus nine over twelve. That's it. So we can find the trig ratios of any coordinate on this Cartesian plane by drawing out the point, draw the triangle for it, and once you have the triangle, then you just do a simple right angle trig after that.
Okay. Now, does everybody follow what we've done here? Let's do one more just, just in case because, it, it, like I said, this is hugely important. Let's say our point was our coordinates negative 4 and 3. And I want all the trig ratios for the coordinate negative 4 and 3. First thing you do, draw your plane. <laughs> Negative 4 and 3, right here. What does that make R? Get off your Gosh. calculator. Do the math in your head. What is it? Negative five? Oh. It's got to be a positive, right? Okay. What is another name for a right angle triangle? Three, four, five triangle. Do you know why it's a three, four, five triangle? Hypotenuse is five. It's the smallest whole numbers that go into Pythagoras' theorem and work out evenly. So they do call it 3, 4, 5. Just like 9, 12, 15, 6, 8, 10, those are the numbers that will come to you quickly. All right, You'll figure it out as you go through this year and next year. Those are the right angle triangles that come out easily. All right, so having said all that, what is the sine of my angle theta here? Sine is what? Yeah, what is it? Three over five. Three over five. Very good. Cos theta? Minus four over five. Very good. Lucas, tan theta? Three over five. Negative four. Negative four. Negative four. four. Okay. All right. Good. Easy, right? That's all there is to it for right now. Okay? So given the coordinates, you just simply draw your triangle out and then find your trig ratios there. All right, so how does this advance for us? How does this progress? Okay, we only use sine, cos, and tan. We are going to eventually use cosecant, secant, and cotangent. What are they? They're the reciprocal of sine, cos, and tan. Cosecant is 1 over sine. Secant is 1 over cos. One, cotan is 1 over was is a one over ten. So all you're doing is reciprocating the ratios. That's all we go to. There's not much more than that. All right. So let's look at again what we did yesterday, and we need to apply it to today. All right. Looking at page seventy, determine the exact values of the sine, cos, and tan ratios of theta equaling 120 degrees. All right. So. Let's draw this up. Again, what do we call this line here on those? Is that the initial arm? Is that right? So we call it yesterday. So we start there and we make 120 degrees. 120 degrees. My terminal arm goes up there. That's 120 degrees. So what am I asking you for? I want to know what the sign of... 120 degrees is, what the cos of 120 degrees is, and what the tan of 120 degrees is. Without using your calculator, I want the exact values of it. Okay? So, what did we do yesterday? Where, where did we get our ratios from yesterday? Pardon me? The reference angle, absolutely. Very good. Okay, where did we get? What did we use yesterday? We used our reference angle. What is my reference angle here? 60 degrees. My reference angle is 60 degrees. Right? 
which makes this 30 up here. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So what was the sign of 60 degrees yesterday? Square root 3 over 2. The cos was? Laura? Aha. Uh -huh. But what quadrant am I in? I'm in the second, which means what? Negative 1 there. First, to start with. Right? Now, what's my ratio? Sine of 120. Sine of 120? 3 over 2. Cos of 120. Negative 1 over 2. Tangent of 120, and you're done. So we did that all based on my reference angle, my 30, 60, 90 triangle. And then I labeled it in order to come up with the ratios. So what's the one ratio? We have to always know what the sine of 30 is, is 1 over 2, right? And that allows us to do it from there. Okay, so now the only thing that we have thrown into this mix with you is now we have negatives and positives. Okay, now we have negatives and positives. All right, let's do one more. Let's try this one. I want the trig ratios for the sine of 225, the tan of 225, and the cos of 225. Okay, so what's the first thing that I have to do? Find my reference angle. What is my reference angle here? 45 degrees. What was the sine ratio for 45 degrees? Square root 2 over 1. What was it? Square root 2 and 1. Square root. Uh, say it again. Square root 2. Square root 2. Or, and one, or one, over square root two. one over square root two. Yeah. So here's what it is. Okay. That's why I picked 45 because it was the other triangle. Root two over two. Cos two over two. All right. Now this one's awkward, but we'll remember it because it's the same. It doesn't ever change. So what is my sine ratio? Minus root 2 over 2. What's my cos ratio? Minus root 2 over 2. And when I take sine over, co sine over cos, that gives me my tan. What's the answer for tan? 1. Very good. Sine divided by cos. Okay. Now. We are going to spend, like I said yesterday, we are going to spend a good solid month on this in grade 12 pre-calculus. How do they change it? How do they make this different? They change degrees to radian measure, which we will look at it part, part way through here. I'll introduce it to you, but it's done the exact same way. We will do all of this material again next year. So we want to really get our base down here so that next year it's just... Touch on it and go. All we do is change the angles from 30 degrees to pi over 6. 45 degrees to pi over 4. And that's a radian measure. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay? All right. Now, here's what we want to do then. This is calculator work, so grab your calculators. The question says, solve for theta. When tan theta is equal to a ratio. Now, so far all we have done is looked at our ratios in terms of 
in terms of fractions, square roots and fractions, exact values. But that doesn't always happen. Our ratio of the side length to another side length could give us a decimal. Okay, so what happens here? Well, here's what we are going to do. The first thing I say to myself, I see that tan theta is equal to a negative. What two quadrants are tan theta equal to negatives? Uh, two and four. Four and two. Right? Exactly. That's where tan is negative. So what am I going to do? I want to find my reference angle up here first. So I want you to punch into your calculator. Second function, tan, positive, 0 0.9004. Okay, give it to me in three decimal places. 31 point? 41. 41. Oh, sorry, 41. 42.000. Yeah, it's a two decimal place. Okay, perfect. So 42.000. Excellent. Okay, there's my reference angle. So now I want to find where does tan equal this in the two negative quadrants. So looking in quadrant two. If my reference angle over here is 42 degrees, theta in quadrant, so the first thing I do, actually I'm going to do this, I'm going to go through the whole procedure that I'd like to see you do on an exam. That, my reference angle, I show theta r. Now you're going to tell me what is the measure of that angle in quadrant 2, and what is the measure of that angle in quadrant 3. So what is it in quadrant two? What's this angle right here? Negative. No. Nope. What do you say? Forty-eight. 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 No, nope, because I want to go from here to here. Oh, sorry. One hundred and forty-eight. Hundred and thirty eight degrees. How do we get that? It's the same every time. Hundred and eighty degrees minus the reference angle, right? Now I want to find it down here. If this is forty two degrees, what is that angle? Three hundred and sixty degrees minus my reference angle. Three one eight. This is the fourth quadrant. Oh, I wrote three. Thanks, ah. Brian. Quadrant four, because that's where it's negative. So, how come I selected quadrant two and quadrant four? Because the question asked, I want to know where the tan ratio is equal to a negative number. That's how come I selected two and four. Now, what you're going to do for the next day here is you're going to look at them as exact values and you're going to just be able to reel it off without using your calculator. But for right now, for example, let's look at uh, B. Look at B. It wants the cos of theta. Where does theta equal root 2 over 2? Okay, first thing you got to tell me, where is where is cos theta positive? Quadrant 1, quadrant 4. Very good. Okay? So my reference angle right here, what is my reference angle? Where is cos theta equal to root 2 over 2? Solve for theta. What is it? Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. What's my reference angle? 45. What did we do yesterday? We found all of the trig ratios for 45 and 3069. Right? So what is it? What is it? 
It's 45 degrees. That's what we learned yesterday. All right? So what is it in quadrant one? It's 45 degrees. It happens to be quadrant run one and my reference angle are the same. What is it in quadrant four then? Three hundred fifteen degrees. Done. So all we're going to do is just get this to be second nature to us. We're going to be able to rattle off root three over two, root two over two, and one half. That's it. And you, and I'm serious. So you're going to be doing this a pile next year. So if you hammered out this year, way way ahead of next year. Now they went in and they showed you how to do this all in calculator. You don't have to. If you give you an exact value that you already know, it's simple. Okay? That's it. You have today to finish 2, 1, 2, 2. Anybody have questions from yesterday's work? No? Nothing from yesterday yet? Okay, so I'm just looking ahead. I see 2, 3 is the sine law, which we've already done and applied. 2, 4 is the cos law, which we already done. So, we want to, uh, what we want to do is, I'm going to take this a little bit further for you tomorrow than what we're supposed to do. Because I want it, like I said, for you for next year, I think if you get a better understanding of this now, then it makes it a lot easier next year. Fair enough? Okay, so no other questions.